Hi, I'm Chris, and we're here for the next in our Getting to Know series of videos. Uh, we've already met Claudia once in our Destination Home video, but now we're going to get to know her a little bit better. So, Megan, as normal, will be asking questions. I might chip in from time to time, but I'm going to hand over to Megan and we'll meet Claudia. Okay, so first things first, introduce yourself to everyone watching, what you do, uh, how long you've been doing it, etc. Right, so I'm Claudia um, and I am a wellness coach for a destination home project, which wasn't in a previous video. Um, and uh, I've been with Changes for about two years, started as a service user. Um, I was a wellness coach before, but delivering programmes to um, our members here, yeah. uh, people in mild to moderate distress, um, and now I'm working on the projects working with homeless people. And tell us a bit about your wellness coaching. Did you enjoy that? How different is it to your role now? Um, it's slightly different, but I think being a wellness coach, like working here in the building previously, that's really prepared me for what I'm doing now because I got all the knowledge. I got to work with many different types of clients, many different types of issues. Um, so that was a, a great sort of preparation for what I'm doing now, which is a bit more challenging, yeah. but I, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm really, I really am. And I just noticed your jumper. I need that jumper. Have you seen it? self love. <laughs> yes, please. I love it. Um, okay, yeah. I mean, yeah, well, this coaching's fun, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Um, and if you didn't work in mental health, what do you think you would do? <laughs> Oh my God. Um, oh, that. So, like, if money didn't matter and yeah. nothing mattered at mm -hmm. all. This is going to be the cheesiest answer in the world, but I would still work in mental health. Oh, would you? I would. Because um, my previous jobs were nothing like it. Mm -hmm. I was working in warehouses, restaurants, shops, all sorts of stuff, all like basic jobs and stuff. And um, before I came here, obviously, um, I mean, two changes. I was a team leader, so I was, had, had a bit of a career and, and things like that. And I thought, oh, this is what I should do. Um, this is where I belong and that kind of, no. Um, first time I came to changes, I thought, yeah, th this is where I belong. Mm -hmm. This is what I should be doing. This is me. And Obviously, there is challenges and difficult days sometimes, but ever since I started working in mental health, I never had a moment like you know on the weekends when we go oh Monday, oh, and Monday. Go, and go. <laughs> no, honest to God, it's it's a great passion of mine, and I just I love it so much. I can't imagine doing anything else. Oh, you're a proper changes person, aren't you? I feel like <laughs> everyone here loves being here, don't they? They don't get that yeah. Monday dread, mm. or do you get Monday dread, Chris? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. I've been here a bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> the enthusiasm has worn off. <laughs> I wouldn't say go that far. No. And on jobs that you have done, it sounds like you've done quite a few different things. Yeah. What is the worst job you've ever had? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my God. Um, definitely warehouse work where you're just like picking stuff and you have to like do the orders and things like mm -hmm. that because all it literally is is just running around in really heavy shoes sweating and yeah. chasing the targets and things like that you don't have a moment to yourself really and yeah i, I did not enjoy that at all and did you struggle with your mental health while you were doing these other jobs what yeah. brought you to change it if you don't mind talking about no that? yeah I, i'm very open about this so um i had definitely had uh, mental health problems since late teens mm -hmm. and i always thought it's just you know normal or part of who i am i'm just a, you know, this way um and now i look back at you know how i was like before in previous jobs and doing all the all sorts of things i definitely had some problems mm -hmm. back then i just did not realize it um, and it's just come to a point for me where um I had a, like a bit of a breakdown four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I think about four years ago, where I just thought I, I, I don't want to be here anymore, and I literally did not want to be. And I had the the, the worst thoughts you could you could think of. I was like regularly self harming, all sorts mm -hmm. of things, um, and yeah, I just at some point I just got so scared of my own thoughts. Went to doctors. But then it was a long process because from me going to the doctors and get going on medication, it took me a year 
to actually get to therapy. Mm -hmm. And I think a big part of it is, and I see a lot of people in changes relating to this, is that bit of a denial. Yeah. I, I don't want to be that person, I don't want to be depressed, oh, I'm not like that, because there is lots of uh, misconceptions about mental health as well. Yeah. And I, I, I was one of those, I, I was very judgmental. Um, and uh, so I got some one-to-one -one therapy and then, and that was very helpful, but, um, and I really needed it. But then when it finished, I was like, what now? What now? Uh, what, what do I do with myself? Like, I was talking to people, but they couldn't really relate to what I'm on about. And I still felt like quite lonely with it. Yeah. And by a complete accident, I saw on Facebook um, a changes program, a changes workshop down in Greenfields in May, two years ago. And it says stress and anxiety. I'm like, this is a bit of me. So I booked on, two days later, I was sitting there in a group and thinking, wow, okay. Yeah. This is what life is about. And it's all about just being around people who just get you. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I mean, yeah, that's what's special about changes as well, isn't it? Like, you saw it on Facebook, one, the power of social media, and then two days later, you're sitting in the room, getting that support going, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not the only one who feels yeah. like this. And it was it was literally it was mind blowing. There is no other way of explaining it because y you get to meet people who you would possibly never talk to. Yeah. People of different backgrounds, different ages, everything. And I sat there thinking, what's going on? And then somebody starts talking and they say the stuff I normally say. And I'm like Yeah. That oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That is so good. And so obviously we've had a global pandemic still in it, are we? Yeah, mm, I suppose we yeah. are. <laughs> what have you done to keep yourself well through that? Okay. Um, see, I I can't. I, I mean, I feel a bit funny to admit it, but I did enjoy uh, yeah, being yeah. at home all the time and yeah. having all this time to myself. And because uh, I'm still on that journey, I'm still you know you're always in recovery. You always have to look after yourself. Yeah. So. I was really happy with that extra amount of time for me to do things. I rediscovered loads of old hobbies since and oh, like what, like what, <laughs> uh, like drawing and mm -hmm. uh, like working with clay, uh, calligraphy, um, uh, taking pictures of stuff, and oh. just also because you just have the time, had the time for it, and obviously it was difficult at times because you can't see people, I can't mm -hmm. see family who are not not here, not in the UK, so that was a bit of a challenge, but. That, again, that's something I've learned in my recovery. Try always try to find the positive side of things and just yeah. focus on that. And all the bad stuff, if you can't help it, if you can't change it, it will hopefully pass. Yeah, absolutely. So you touched on your family not being in this country. Tell me about that. <laughs> uh, so my mom lives in Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been there for about nine years now, I think. Um, and um, and my dad lives in Iceland. Iceland and Germany. Family, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My granddad's in Poland. Um, so yeah, I'm stuck all over the place and I'm here obviously. So where were you born? In Poland. In Poland. Yeah. And how long have you been in the UK? It will be actually in about a week's time, but eight years. Wow. I know. <laughs> so so what, what made you come to the UK? That's that's a funny story as well. So, uh, so, so the original plan was for me and my then boyfriend to come here and earn some money mm -hmm. and to move to Iceland or like Norway or somewhere. Oh, yeah. But obviously, life happens. Um, I kind of liked being here, although I did hate it at first. I didn't really like the food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels important. Um, and uh, we sort of split up on good terms. We're still good friends. He's got a big family back there, so he went back. I stayed here, and sort of went with the flow. And yeah, I'm no, I'm not moving now. I'm not staying here. I love it here. Really? Yeah. Mm. This this and there was a point in in my life a few years ago when I was sort of and that contributed to my mental distress when I didn't have my space, my place mm -hmm. where I like belong as in physically like place you could help call home yeah because you know with parents splitting up not having the family out and then everybody being all over the place I was really lost with that uh, but I'm kind of I'm, I'm really glad that I sort of persisted with staying here mm -hmm. because I managed to build that those support home. networks yeah. and, and home and I remember years ago I'm going on tangents now okay. but I remember years ago um I was going back from a holiday back in Poland and was coming here and I thought yeah this is home 
this this is home. It felt like you were coming home. Yeah, oh, I yeah, love that. Yeah. So what what's so bad about the food? <laughs> I've got the taste for oatcake yet. <laughs> no, I do like it now. I do like it. I've learned to love it. it. It's grown on me. But at first, I was like, especially, I hated English breakfast. Really? Yeah, I looked at it and I thought, no. no. So what's so different? So what? what's classic, traditional Polish food? Um, <laughs> I don't want to offend the whole British nation. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Um, it's... Like Polish food is a bit more healthier and less greasy and less yeah. like grey and mushy <laughs> and fried. It's not all beige. <laughs> I'm not saying it's all you know ch grilled chicken and salads in Poland because obviously we do have a bit of a like heavier stuff. But yeah, we definitely have more veg and like a bit more healthier options and yeah. Oh. <laughs> I hate to move to Poland. <laughs> <laughs> but I love British food now. I love shepherd's pie and I love English breakfast now as well. So I like oat nice cakes, yeah. You like oat cakes? Yeah. Like, oh, she can stay in Stoke. Yeah. <laughs> Stoke is home now if you yes. like oat cakes. Um, you just need to start turning the roof up in your place all the time now. I do that. <laughs> I do it. I actually do it is everywhere it? I go. I've made a Stoke contract. Yes. You don't do that. Oh, you need to go then. Don't no, you? I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do it. What, you check your plates? Yeah, well, you you go where you somewhere. I said that, I just... Check to see if he made them still contract. It says England. But it is still like that's around the corner, yeah. isn't it? That was from Padley, yeah. that's yeah. what it was, yeah. Um, okay, pra okay. I'll go to Poland. <laughs> I'll be there. Great. Okay. Um, we can swap. Yeah, I'd love that. Literally get around the plane. Um so do you have any pets? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, those people who know me know that I have um, a lovely cat named Chips. Chips? <laughs> oh, Chips. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And what does Chips look like? Is it a girl boy? Um, it's a boy and he's ginger. And oh he's, my god. he's big. He's a big boy. Well, he's got a very small head, which is weird. Like Garfield. <laughs> kind of. Not as floppy, but yeah. Yeah, he's a big lad. <laughs> oh my god. I feel like I'm going to have to edit and insert a picture. Of chips right now. Yeah. Okay, so we love chips. Have you always been a cat lady? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I had those when I was growing up and that, but um, then just somehow when I was little, we got a cat, and yeah, I'm more of a cat person because I really like they have their own, because like they're a bit like me, like like their own space, yeah. and independent, and I'll come to you when I want to, that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a bit like me. <laughs> yeah. I like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. And. Where is one place in the world that you want to visit that you haven't already? Ooh. There's lots of places actually, but the closest to like where we are now and possibly probably the most possible to visit at the moment is Scotland, but like oh, really yeah. up north, uh, like the rural, rural, rural. rural. <laughs> are you trying to say that in a Scottish accent? <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> uh, so yeah, up north. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's supposed to be beautiful out there. Have you ever yeah. been to the top, top of? Not the top, no. Um, Edinburgh's the furthest. Yeah. I've never been. I think I went a bit further. I can't remember what it's called there. Yeah. I wanted to go. I wanted to go see Loch Ness, obviously, while we were up there. But it's a lot further than what you think. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You get it's a big drive up there, isn't it? <laughs> Have you been watching anything on TV? Any box sets that you're into? Right, so, <laughs> um, where do I start? Because obviously lockdown and everything, so you watch every possible thing in the world. So I either, I watch pretty much two, three things. So it's either anything that's got to do with crime. So all sorts of crime shows, mm -hmm. um, series on Netflix, um, real kind of crime or just made up stories and things like that. Uh, the most recent I really liked was on Sky. So proper crime but like crime drama kind of thing Mare of East Town that was really good oh, with um, Kate Winslet that was brilliant um, but then I do because obviously when I come back home and I'm sort of you know mentally a bit tired and I don't want to focus on too much my guilty pleasure is EastEnders oh, yeah. oh my god <laughs> and if you were going to be in EastEnders what family <laughs> would you be in? Um, <laughs> <laughs> or what existing character would you be? Oh my god, um, that is 
the best question anybody ever asked me. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I was to be in a family in this end, this I think I would I would probably be with the Mitchells, oh, with the buddies, yeah, yeah. <laughs> rule the town and all. Um, and if I was to be a character like the, the one that's already known, oh, be Cat Slater. Oh, I love <laughs> that. Because nobody messes with her. <laughs> no, they don't. I, yeah. <laughs> I can see that, I like that one. I'm going to have to bounce that to you, Chris. Do you watch any soaps? Soaps. No. no soaps? No soaps. Oh, <laughs> it is my lifelong dream since I was about 12 to be a McQueen in Hollyoaks. Do you watch Hollyoaks? No. Oh, see, I'm a McQueen for sure. Jack, you're a McQueen. <laughs> I'm going to be in. I'm going to be in McQueen's. That's brilliant. A Mitchell. I can see that. I like that so much. Keeping up with the Mitchells. And then, sorry, you didn't say your last one. Uh, the last one, um, RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh, yes. Got to be. Your favourite ever queen, favourite drag star. Um, so, like, favourite ever, ever, and, like, a role model even is obviously Ru. Yeah. Uh, can't, honestly, the best person ever. Uh, but, like, out of the contestants, mm -hmm. it's definitely Bianca Del Rio. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, with the jokes and the wit and the sassiness and just everything. Yeah, she she don't mess about at all. And yeah, and I'm really glad she won as well. She, yeah. And what wins, the American version or the UK version? Ooh. Oh, have you got an hour? <laughs> <laughs> um, at the moment, I liked out of the recent ones. I like the British one more. Yeah. Because I think the queens were better just the, the weather level was was pretty much up there very the talented other, yeah it was the american one but i think because they don't have about 13 seasons of american yeah, one they amazing. just sort of running out of them yeah <laughs> well yeah <laughs> they might be yeah yeah we're yeah. fresh to the game that's yeah. true and i want to learn how to say lawrence jamie and scottish accents accent it, i couldn't even begin to try <laughs> not gonna no i was literally in my head i thought shall i try no <laughs> <laughs> not going to do that to myself. Yeah. And do you have, you mentioned obviously lots of creative hobbies that you pick back up in lockdown. Do you have any other hobbies? Do you go to the gym, go horse riding, go walking? <laughs> um, yes, uh, gym is definitely up there. Mm -hmm. um, again, as a part of my recovery, I started going, uh, like getting like PT sessions and that. So that's been really helpful. Um, walking. Pretty much up there as well, I mean, mainly because it's a necessi necessity because mm -hmm. I don't drive, so I have to walk everywhere. But I enjoy it. Um, yeah, all the creative things. I love gardening. Oh yeah. I've got absolute loads of house plants. It's it's becoming a bit um, worrying to be like honest. a jungle. <laughs> it's like a jungle. <laughs> it honestly is. But I love looking after them, and then when the little ones start popping up, it's just so nice. Yeah, when they start <laughs> reproducing. Yes. I've got an aloe at home, and it literally just keeps spitting out more. It's it's looking like an aloe vera jungle. Yeah. And if you can't know me, I'm gonna give you some. Give you some babies. It's gone full circle. It has. It literally has gone full circle. I had the first babies of Chris, and now it's just. Going back oh, months that's and cute. Can you keep them alive though? Because I tend to stick with succulents because they don't really. Mm. Can't really kill them, can you? You can't. No, they can dry out as long as you bring yeah. them back to life. Again. You can literally yeah. just bring them back to life. You can't, yeah. I've got a great rule for keeping plants and your garden. So the less you do, the better. Really? Because <laughs> I'm very forgetful. And even though I may come across as very organised and I've got my diaries and lists and stick, sticky notes mm -hmm. and everything else, I forget to water them and forget to look after them. So, but it seems to be working. So, <laughs> so you need something, right? Like. Exactly. <laughs> oh, God, I love that. Yeah. I, I think you can do that with aloes, can't you? You can forget loads with them. Yeah. So just defy. Do you read? I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes, I do. And again, um, something uh, I recently got back into because because of my mental health for years, I just I could not read a book because mm -hmm. I just couldn't focus. Um, and about two months ago, I got this book of, oh, I can't remember his name now, he's a comedian, but he used to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And he wrote this um, sort of series of like real life things that had happened in hospital and he was in training and everything else. But obviously, because him being a comedian, it's so funny, mm. and it got me into like I, I read this book in two days maybe. It was so great, and that really got me back into it. So I'm reading a, 
I started reading uh, Steve Price books yeah. about his own life, so from when he was growing up and all sorts of things. So I'm really enjoying that at the moment. It's quite interesting that you say when, when your mental health isn't doing great that you can't read because that's something over the last few years I've heard come up loads yeah. and it's the same with me, like if I'm stressed, even just like minorly stressed, I'll read the same page about six yeah. times and it just doesn't go in. Yeah. yeah. I was struggling a few months ago. I like to read, I've talked about before, yeah. it's a, a distraction, it gets me out of me real life, but I was struggling to read, couldn't concentrate on them. And then I went away for a week and a friend's carrying about and I read four or five books that were quite nice, just seven were nice to read. Yeah. But I haven't been able to read a, a book for a couple of months. It's a real indicator, isn't it, of how, how your brain's doing. Yeah. Pick up a book and see if you can take it in. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's something I've just really noticed over the past few years, especially yeah. with myself, that yeah, I won't, won't retain it. Yeah, interesting that you said that. So on wellness tools, what are your go-tos? What keeps you well? If you, if you can tell you're not doing great, mm -hmm. what do you turn to? The first thing I do is um, just give myself some me time, and that's I'll message people who are close to me saying listen i'm just going to be quiet for a day or something because i need to reset and just so i put my phone away um and just just do things you know put around the house and listen to music and just completely sort of switch off from the outside world mm -hmm. um and that really tends to help um meditation like mindfulness and things like that that's that's a great one as well um, plus all my hobbies like you're walking and yeah. gardening and reading and, and knitting, drawing, all sorts of things. Yeah. I think hobbies are so important yeah. for your mental health, aren't they? Yeah. Especially like working with the kids, I found the ones that have hobbies manage their emotions yeah. so much better. Mm -hmm. And I think on this note, because uh, I was actually thinking about it earlier today, um, when I was like much younger, and I'm still talking like five or 15 years ago or something, I had again loads of hobbies. So loads of things and again mostly creative stuff but i was always busy with stuff and again when i look back now gradually over the years i just stopped doing yeah. those things but that was because i was unwell mm -hmm. and because that's what it is about mental distress it just robs you of these things that you just don't enjoy stuff anymore you don't see the point in doing them you're not happy with anything you do yeah. so you may as well just not do anything at all which again makes it makes things even worse so it just goes in a circle mm -hmm. doesn't it um, so now, you know, when I feel much better, um, I just tend to pick up everything because I'm just so excited. You want to do it all. Yes, because yeah. I, yes, finally I'm back to being myself and I can enjoy stuff and I want to do everything and learn mm. about everyone. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very enthusiastic, like a puppy. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I can relate to that. I think it's weird, isn't it, because we all have such our individual journeys and personalities, but we all kind of have the same cycles of yeah. like the hobbies all go away yeah. you get isolated from everything mm. you don't enjoy anything and yeah. it is the small things you can't read a book if yeah. we all just notice these tiny little telltales mm. we do all kind of do the same things obviously in our own ways but yeah you know, yeah just interesting isn't it okay do you listen to any podcasts Yes, there is one podcast I listen to, and surprise, surprise, is uh, RuPaul and Michelle Visage. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle is an absolute yes, legend. Yeah. But what I find in like RuPaul's world and the world of drag queens and, and all these, you know, all those kinds of people, and that, I find it very fascinating because it's not just about, you know, dressing up and looking pretty. Yeah. It's so much more than that. It's about what I found the most sort of comforting about the show and the whole sort of culture around it is that it's people who have been bullied in the past or feel like they don't belong they can't find their own space and 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 really struggle with who they are and then they find you know the, the art of drag and everything's great and this is yeah i just i can't even put it into words that's why i'm so fascinated by it yeah. and, and you know all the histories of all the queens that come to that podcast and talk about their lives which is amazing mm -hmm. yeah so that's where the fascination comes from and obviously it's hilarious some of the things they say yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely yeah um and what is one thing you could you couldn't live without just one just one <laughs> um yeah you, you know you know what's coming it's <laughs> chips chips <laughs> Absolutely chips. Yeah, yeah. 
I love that. Picture again. Yeah, it's a picture <laughs> again. Yeah, yeah. And if someone is watching this video and they're struggling with their mental health, what would you like to say to them? Just because you feel like you're struggling and you feel that you need help, it doesn't make you weak. Mm -hmm. And if anything, that makes you even a stronger person than anybody else because fighting your own demons every day from the time you wake up time you go sleep eventually is the hardest thing one can do yeah very yeah. true and it's important to speak out isn't it when, yeah. when you feel like that mm -hmm. and yeah speak out in any way whether it's posting on twitter or speaking to a friend or talking to a stranger coming to a group of changes just find find your thing yeah and whatever it is that works for you you just keep doing it it's transformative when you find your thing isn't yeah it? it is well what a lovely note to end on <laughs> okay thank you claudia thank you thank very you. much thank you megan thank you you okay and we'll see you again soon Bye -bye.